Okay, hello everyone. Um, my name is Ray, and this is gonna be my talk on KTAP general tooling. I mostly work on the KUnit team with David, but I also work on KTAP. So, okay, I'm gonna start on some background. Um, if you've worked with KSelfTest or KUnit, I'm sure you know what KTAP is. But just as an overview, um, KTAP is the official test result format for the Linux kernel. Um, I've linked to a specification here in the kernel docs. It's been upstream since 5.17, approximately in 2021. Um, Tim here worked on the original specification. Um, I've included an example here of some simple KTAP. Um, it's simple text-based, and it's actually based on the test anything protocol, which is TAP. So it's kernel TAP or KTAP, hence the name. Um, and then in the example, you can see there are some general components that KTAP shares. There's a version line, a test plan. Um, that's that sort of one dot dot two line. It shows the number of tests that are gonna be involved. And then most importantly, there are the results lines. Those are the ones that say okay or not okay. Um, and then there's something sort of seen as like a comment that's considered a diagnostic line. And um, that really shows any sort of supplemental test information. Um, and then really importantly, KTAP allows for nested tests. So for this example, we have one test suite with two subtests. So that's just an overview. Um, I find it really helpful to look at what KTAP results actually look like now. So the specification was back in 2021, um, but since then it's been more and more widely used. Um, so mo like major frameworks have taken lots of efforts to improve the compliance to the KTAP specification. I've included some KUnit results and also some KSelf test results here. Um, there are some slight differences, I'm sure you can tell, um, but really they've come a lot closer together in terms of their compliance with the KTAP spec. Um, so here you can see KUnit maybe has some uh, like funny diagnostic lines underneath the version, and KSelf test uses hashes as indentation. Um, but overall, they've come a long way to follow this specification. Um, really quickly, um, plugging the KTAP version two. Um, so I've been working on this for the past year, and I've included a compiled list of patches for KTAP v2. Um, it's mostly ready to go, although given Tim's talk earlier, maybe there's more discussion to be had on KTAP version two. Um, the largest component of what we have approved right now is KTAP metadata. Um, this was a presentation I gave last year at Plumbers. It's mo mainly a framework for outputting supplemental test information. So um, things like test speed, module name, there's a whole big list. If you're interested in this, I'm happy to talk to you after this. Um, or you can look it up on Lore and um, it's on like version four, but it has been approved. Um, and since this is the first version after the initial specification, the method for accepting these patches is still a little bit unclear. The tentative proposal is to bring these accepted patches in via KUnit, but if anyone has any additional ideas, I'm planning on speaking to some people after this on this. Okay, and then getting into more of the heart of this presentation, um, KTAP tooling. So currently, we mostly have parsers. This makes a lot of sense. KTAP is kind of dense, a little hard to read, a little hard to find in um, output, dense kernel logs, for example. So we have everything from a variety of simple parsers that just check for okay or not okay to more complex parsers. I personally work a lot on the KUnit parser, so I've included a screenshot of the KUnit parser output. You can see that there's you know pretty colors. It's a little bit more of a pretty print, human readable output. Um, but I know there are other framework-specific parsers, um, some not even in the kernel tree. Um, you could consider within those parsers there are some sort of like hidden features that could technically be considered additional tooling. So for example, the ability to isolate, isolate KTAP documents within the kernel log. Um, it's simple, but it would be nice if that would be modulated out um, into sort of an independent feature, um, along with summary lines or even this feature that I'm currently working on to compile a list of metadata um, from KTAP lines. Um, again, mostly our overall tooling are these sort of framework-specific parsers that are sort of monolithic rather than modular. Okay, so I really wanna have a discussion on what the system is doing well and how could it be improved. Um, first, for what it's doing well, I think this tooling has made the experience working with KTAP extremely better, working from it with personal experience, especially parsers. Um, they improve my life so much. 
Um, and then additionally, I think this tooling really helps to fulfill framework-specific needs because it is developed within those specific frameworks. So a case self-test has a case self-test feature, and um, you can easily add that to the parser. So I think that's what it's doing well. Um, however, what can it be, how can it be improved? Um, the first thing I think is that there's some redundancy here. We're not sharing any resources. So there's redundancy in code and developer efforts. So for example, if a new framework wanted to start using KTAP, they would likely look to write their own parser, which is not ideal considering we already have lots of parsers. Um, so I think there's some redundancy um, in developer efforts again. Um, second, I think this tooling really isn't visible. There's no documentation on it. Um, there's no central location where you can find it. I don't think people are even really aware of the extent of what the parsers are that are out there. And third, I think we can do more. I think we can expand this beyond just parsers. Um, so Tim was mentioning some sort of benchmark tooling. Um, but I think you could do other things. So I've considered recently adding a converter for KTAP to JSON or JUnit XML, and um, there's no really location for me to put those things. If I put them in the KUnit library right now, um, I don't think it would be visible to most kernel developers, so I think we can do more. So that brings to my proposal. Um, uh, so I propose a new library, which would include KTAP common tooling. Um, this would mainly be a common parser because that is the number one feature that I suspect people would use, but I do plan to add additional tooling as well, and the hope would be that this would um, be used by multiple frameworks. So sort of the objective here would be a Swiss Army knife where you have all your favorite KTAP tools in one location, and hopefully this would reduce redundancy, um, increase visibility of this tooling, and finally having one common library I think would help reinforce the KTAP specification. So we've had problems in the past with people agreeing on one common specification and having one common tooling library, one common parser, I think would reinforce the specification moving forward into future versions of KTAP. Um, so where would this be located? Um, in a new directory called Tools Testing KTAP. Um, it'd be written in Python and a command line interface, um, but also ability to directly access the methods. Um, Okay, so more specifically, what can it do? I've talked about the parser, um, but of course this would be my initial focus. I think I would work on this primarily at the beginning to ensure that um, we have one common parser. Um, the goal of this would be to isolate and output KTAP results in sort of a pretty print, human readable format, similar to what you saw in the KUnit parser. Um, but really importantly, I think this should be compliant to both KUnit and KSelfTest output as it is right now. Um, I don't think there's any point in making a common parser that doesn't work with the current tools we are using. Um, okay, and then the next four are possible features. I'm not set on them, but I do think they would potentially be good ideas. So one would just be an isolator, super simple. You take a kernel log, you isolate where the KTAP document is, and you spit it out. Um, it seems simple, but it would be really useful, and I end up doing this manually most of the time, so. Um, second would be sort of a splitter or a combiner. This is slightly more confusing, so I've included a graphic here. Basically, when you're running KTAP tests, you often run KTAP, and then there's like a space and some kernel log, and, or you run a test and you get KTAP, and then there's a kernel log in between, and then you have like another KTAP document, sort of like this here on the left. Um, the combiner would basically isolate them and then combine them into one sort of valid KTAP document. Um, Often when you take these big kernel logs and you throw them into a parser, only the first one actually gets parsed correctly. And so if it was in one valid KTAP document, it just makes things easier to work with. It's a small tool, but again, these are things that I end up doing manually most of the time. Okay, and then a summarizer. Um, that's just one of the features that are normally within parsers now, but I think it would be nice to be able to ge just generate a summary line. And then finally, converters. This is what I was kind of talking about before. So this would be a tool that would convert KTAP to JUnit or um, JSON. So it could be other formats as well. I'm open to additional ideas if anyone has one. Um, but the idea would be you could actually use this to upload results to a CI system or something like KCIDB. 
Okay, so that's a lot of concepts, and because this presentation is mostly a proposal, I wanted to give you some hope that this would actually work. So um, I've been working on the current KUnit parser and just with a few little tweaks, um, mostly to work out the indentation with the hash in k-self-test. I've taken some pretty standard k-self-test results here and input it into the parser, and as you can see, you already get some pretty nice output. Um, I would clean it up a little bit, you know, maybe remove the times that don't make any sense anymore, but um, for the most part, I think this is a pretty impressive result for relatively little work, and I imagine if I had more time and effort, this could really be polished, and we'd have a common parser. Okay, wrapping up here, because I definitely want to hear what people have to say about this, um, but some general pros and cons here. Um, some pros, uh, I've spoken a little bit about these, so I'll go over them kind of fast, but frameworks would be able to share resources, and it would reduce redundancy in code. Um, one library would reinforce the KTAP spec. Um, KTAP tooling would be more accessible and visible, especially for new kernel developers. And I think in, this would incentivize new tooling because we would have one space for it. Um, I know for me, it would encourage me to make more KTAP tooling if I had a space where I could actually add those tools. And then cons, I think this first one's gonna be the biggest one. Um, I do think it would disincentivize development of framework-specific parsers. So, for example, if k-self-test had a specific feature that they wanted to parse out um, and they started using this common parser, it would make it a little bit more difficult um, to use that. I'm definitely not opposed to adding sort of a flag to the common parser to um, parse out a specific k-self-test feature or a specific k-unit feature um, or something similar, uh, but I don't think you could add too many of those specific flags. That would be more on a case-by-case -case basis. Um, but yeah, that would be the first con. Second, it's a new tooling library that we'd have to maintain outside of the current frameworks that we're already using. And then third, I think this would slow down development of parsers and similar, um, this common tooling, because we'd need to get more people's approval of it, um, and with more opinions, just slows down the process a little bit more. So those are my discussions. I want to open it up to questions. Where's the little box? Oh. <laughs> okay, my first observation, I think this is a great idea. Um, my first observation is that you could also uh, add to your list of uh, potential features, uh, a turn it into a test itself, right? So uh, compatibility test to make sure that output from k-self test or k-unit is in the appropriate format, right? So if you, yeah, so you could validate, use it as a validator as well as yeah, no, I love that idea, absolutely. Uh, could you put this uh, in releases on PyPy so I can use it if I don't have a kernel tree around? Um, potentially, I think it would be pretty modular, so it would just be a Python library. I imagine you could add it to release pipelines. So yeah, that's a great idea too. Keep them coming. <laughs> Any other questions? You just love it. I'm, I'm so happy. <laughs> oh. We'll have a show as well. Um, so I think it would be really interesting uh, just to say that the obvious thing to uh, yeah, work out how we could use this alongside what Tim's been working on to have, you know, uh, you use this library, build in things for uh, dealing with tests which maybe have indeterminate results when they originally run and doing post-processing on them, um, which would, could be great. Um, equally, I know the existing KUnit implementation supports um, streaming of results, so we can start printing things out before they're completed. Um, would we be able to do that? And maybe um, if we're doing, um, you know, Tim's uh, performance testing stuff, uh, have that as, you know, pipe uh, the results straight through and be uh, automatically, you know, dealing with that as part of it. You wouldn't need to necessarily have the tests themselves pull things, um, pull results in. Yeah, one thing about the current KUnit parser, it, it does incremental results, so as you feed in the output, um, it'll produce it, and that's where those like timestamps, if you remember, um, that's where those would come from. I think that would be possible if you um, 
did that with K self tests too, if you had like sort of a stream like that, but I haven't looked into that. But it's a really nice feature. I enjoy that in K unit. And then, yeah, any sort of post processing, I think this would be a good location for that. Um, post processing metadata or the benchmark information, stuff like that. Um, I want to talk more to Tim later about the unknown test result. I was interested yeah, in that. Thing. Yeah, it does a little bit. I just said it complicates things, so yeah. it, it's going to mess up everybody's parser. If, <laughs> uh, well, and that, that was, sorry, that was one of my concerns is that uh, if you don't get sequential test case numbers, does that throw off your parser, right? Because if, you, if yeah. you can't just ignore it as an unknown line, but then. You might get a warning, but I yeah, think it's possible. Anyway, there's weird things that happen. <laughs> yeah. Um, so regarding the format conversion, mm -hmm. um, are you, well, first of all, I think it's very important because like you're saying that you want to make it more human readable, so, like, and then I think it's also important to make it more machine readable. Um, yes. So are you leaning towards one format or, I know you're open to suggestions, but are you leaning towards one or the other and for um, what I've reason? I've already done some work on just JSON because um, we have a similar tool in KUnit that directly outputs our results to JSON. So I already have something kind of similar working to that already. But I've had some requests for JUnit XML. Um, I see some nods out there. So yeah, that's, I'm considering doing both, basically, as a starting point. And then if anyone has any additional framework sort of formats that they want to discuss with me afterwards, I'd be happy to look into that as well. Okay. Yeah, I think J Jason. Usually, the complaint is like you can't comment, right? But at, yeah. the, at the same time, you have, you already have the human readable stuff somewhere else, and then this would be more on the other side. So. Yeah, you'd end up just making like a field for like diagnostic information in JSON. So, it's the best you can do. <laughs> oh, this is gonna be a good one. No. So, I was just wondering when you were talking basically about the parser. Mm -hmm. to like pass uh, that a bit crude output into something nicer. Mm -hmm. I was basically thinking that uh, the general errors and warnings that we have in the kernel already, like when you just compile, for example, are also sometimes a bit crude. Um, so could we maybe have like a broader effort of like a parser? So not just looking at KTAP, but looking at a broader scale? Oh, interesting. Um, that might go above my pay grade, but yes, I think that that's a great idea. I've had some people discuss with me parsing out errors and warnings into more human readable formats, and I think that's a great idea, um, but we don't have any sort of specification f right now for what that would look like. Um, yeah, I think that's a great idea. If anyone wants to work on that with me, I'm, I'm open definitely to doing that. I mean, you work for Google, right? <laughs> I do. <laughs> uh, talking about uh, handling in general the, 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 the logs, sometimes together with the KTAP, you may end having in the middle some uh, errors or warnings. And uh, so you will need any way to pass this somehow. Otherwise, you may be hiding things that are happening during the K tests. Yeah, um, so I showed you a very nice test here where everything passed. Um, maybe I should have thrown in something a little bit grosser. Um, but basically, if one of these tests failed, above it would be all of the like raw log um, up at, like within that test um, case. So like you see sort of this information above the test here. Um, it would print out that information. Um, so you're not losing the information. I print it if anything bad sort of happens. Um, but it's a little tricky. It doesn't always happen exactly perfectly. Sometimes things print out later. So I'd be lying if I say it catches absolutely everything. So, yeah. yeah. So I like the idea of making it a KCIDB client. Um, <laughs> Because that way, if my if uh, hypothetically I had some other tests and this was in PyPy uh, that produced KTAP output, then uh, then I could get a free KCIDB client out of it. Uh, but oh, just a note on that: so it wasn't the actual data that was an issue when I was trying to write the Fuego client; it was the metadata. And so there's issues with uh, 
if you're going to write a KCIDB client, you got to make sure you have appropriate metadata to go along with it, which is not going to be obvious from the test results themselves. So that involves an extra step of gathering some extra metadata from somewhere. Yeah, I, I have looked into that. That's if anyone was here for my talk last year, it was the KTAP metadata. You'd have to include more output in your results, so it would be like things about your branch and things like that, and you know, date, time, things that KCIDB really likes to have. So it would be, um, you'd have to sort of have a collaboration between the framework and the common library in order to get that to work perfectly, but I don't think it's a stretch. I think most people have that information. Um, but I think uh, doing the specification of KTAP metadata would need to happen before that. So if anyone has any thoughts on KTAP metadata, please um, go onto the list and join like, the discussion on KTAP v2, because um, we need to get that done first before we get that done. Yeah. Uh, just to, to echo that a little bit, I think um, one of the advantages of having common tooling like this is if we did want to inject extra metadata, we could have a invocation of this tool that just says add at the top level, you know, this key value pair as metadata, you know, kernel this that you could easily work into your scripts and get one KTAP document that combines all of your uh, various tests along with the metadata equally, yeah, if we're, that was exactly the problem we hit with KUnit trying to output KCIDB style JSON was, you know, where do you get all the metadata from? I'm sure we can, worst case, either it can be KTAP metadata, or we can just pass a huge number of things on the command line, or pass another file that stores it somewhere. Yeah. Was there a question back there? Tests are good. I would also love to know which lines of code were covered in the test. So. Ooh, yeah, printing yeah. out a coverage. Yeah, report. some sort of coverage. And we're adding, hopefully, adding LLVM cov to the kernel, so you get source-based instrumentation. I know coverage requires instrumentation, so that breaks a lot of testing scenarios, so it's not perfect, but yes, I would love to see that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good idea. Okay. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> <laughs>